It's on fire. It's going to drip. This is not good. All right, guys, today we're talking about one of your favorites, Carbon X CFPA6 from 3DX Tech. This stuff right here. This is a nylon filament with carbon fiber based on nylon 6.6, approximately 10 to 13% carbon fill. And it's formulated right here in the USA using a PA6 copolymer reinforced with very high modulus carbon fiber. This filament is ideal for anybody who wants a structural component with high modulus, improved chemical and thermal resistance, and excellent surface quality, uh, not to mention very easy printing. If you've seen the Mark Forge parts, yes, you can do just as good in this material right here. The Generation 3 that we've got here in our shop at visionminer.com slash materials actually has a higher HDT than previous grades at around 147 Celsius, allowing for expanded use in high temp applications. Here's the box and let's take out the spool and you order it on our online store. This is what you will get. It comes in a vacuum packed bag. It's very thick, thick plastic and uh, you will have to dry it even when it's brand new. So if it's not fully sealed when you receive it, don't worry about it. You got to dry this stuff anyway. And we'll talk more about that in just a second. By the way, why do you want to buy from us? Simple, you get 3% back on every dollar you spend. That can be used towards nozzles, spools, glue, machines, accessories, more filament, anything you want. Plus, we're always on the phone to help you when you need it, when you bought it from our store. So definitely check that out. We've got everything from machines to nozzles to filament and everything you need for high temp 3D printing. What are you waiting for? Click that link in the description below, visionminer.com slash materials. Okay, so let's talk about where you're going to see this material in the real world. Aside from the McLaren parts and their suspension that they're actually using it in, that is a great one. But you do see it a lot in automotive from uh, covers and housings. You know, the top of a lot of radiators are made out of carbon fiber nylon, a lot of bracketing and things like that. Uh, some motor parts, fuel line components, cooling pumps, bushings, bearings uh, in aircraft engines, uh, charge air coolers, intake manifolds, resonators, uh, engine cover components, heat shields, um, fuel cutoff and water heater manifold valves, connectors, um, motor housing, even headlight components. By the way, if this video is helpful to you, please hit that like button. It tells the algorithm that our content is valuable and you want more of it. We've got a ton more videos coming, so make sure you subscribe so that you see those as they come out. So real quick, let's just talk about what type of machine you need to print this filament. Your nozzle needs to go to at least 240 Celsius, up to 270, so your Ender 3 will actually print this. Uh, your bed temperature should be anywhere from 80 to 110 Celsius, usually gets great results. And as far as adhesives, our nanopolymer adhesive actually works fantastic with every nylon we carry. No brims, no extra, you know, uh, adhesion on the bed if it's glass, build tack, uh, PEI it works fantastic. As far as having a heated chamber, it's not required, but it will help get stronger parts, especially if they're really big. It'll get rid of some of that warping, which isn't too bad with the carbon fiber filled stuff. But if you're on a Prusa or a CR10 or other standard consumer machine, you can still get pretty good, relatively good sized parts with this material. As far as drying, like all nylons, you really have to dry this stuff thoroughly before you print it, even when it's fresh out of a vacuum sealed bag. Now, nylon is super hygroscopic, means, meaning it, it absorbs moisture from the air. Now, it's not a ton of moisture, but it's enough that it'll create steam when you're extruding it through the tiny nozzle, and that'll ruin your surface finish. It'll warp a lot more. You won't have as good mechanical properties, and just overall, you need to dry this stuff really well before you print it. Now, as far as drying, we do have a full drying kit available on visionminer.com slash dry kit with a vacuum chamber and we've got ovens. And it's the best way that we've found to get all the moisture out so that your prints don't get ugly and weak. We're here to make it easy for you. Honestly, we also made metal spools so you can dry at higher temps and faster. With nylon, you don't need the metal spools to prevent melting because you cool it, you dry it at around 70 to 90 Celsius. But with the carbon fiber, when you, especially when you get down to that last bit, we've got all these areas around the edges that you can secure it. So it's not flopping around on most spools, which only have one or two little connection points. So these are really, really functional. They help out a lot with all the carbon fiber filaments. 
So let's talk about some basic material specs. You've got a heat deflection temperature on this blend of 147 Celsius. That's the continuous use temperature, really. The melt point's around 220 Celsius, and the substance is crystalline. Nylon is a crystalline polymer, so you can anneal it, but it does have a crystalline structure, and that's important to note when you're actually printing it, depending on your geometry. As far as tensile strength goes, you get around 63 megapascals. But do keep in mind the way you print your part and the way it's designed, and the orientation at which it's printed will have a dramatic effect on strength. You always, almost always, some materials are different, but you usually lose a little bit of strength in the z-axis with FDM technology, depending again how it's printed. Now all the data sheets are available on our online store at visionminer.com data, so you can find the tensile modulus, the elongation at break, impact strength, and more just by visiting that link, which should be in the description below. Uh, now let's talk about some specific environmental factors. So CFPA6, really PA6, has lower UV resistance for outdoor use than, than nylon 12. But with the carbon fiber, that actually absorbs a lot of the UV and it works pretty well over time. As far as hydrolytic resistance, meaning can you use it in water, it, nylon does tend to break down if used in water for years at a time. If you're doing quick things in and out of water, it, it'll be fine for a long time. But if you're using this on the side of a boat, there's some better materials on our website that you should consider instead. As far as chemicals go, it's really good with oils, greases, fuels, and hydrocarbons, which you find in automotive applications a lot. So if you're making under the hood parts, this is a great material for that, especially with the temperature resistance. Now, nylon is a great insulating material, but with the carbon fiber in there, it makes it a bit conductive. Uh, so while it's not fully ESD safe, it is in the electrostatic dissipative category of materials. It's ideal for parts with high modulus and resistance mixed with great surface finish. If you've seen the Mark Forge parts, you can get exactly the same quality on most printers out of this material here. It also holds dimensional accuracy very, very well after printing thanks to that carbon fiber matrix inside. It's also usable at a higher range of temperatures than the glass-filled PA6. It's stronger than the PA12, but it's not quite as high temp as the PA12. Okay, so let's check out some parts on the table. Now, if you want way more in-depth, we've got 10 to 15 minute videos on our YouTube channel and across the web and on our website going over all kinds of carbon fiber nylon parts, their uses, ideas, applications. So definitely check out those videos if you really want to go deep on this stuff. But just as a quick overview, we've got a big HVAC duct thing here with different things that you can mount on it. This is the mounting bracket and you can put some sort of thermostat or something there. Maybe this is part of an intake for a car or something like that. Um, this was actually part of a vacuum mold for a customer that we test printed and with different settings and whatnot. But it shows, you know, if you're doing, you know, hundreds and hundreds of runs on a hot vacuum molding machine, then this material is a replacement for aluminum. So you, instead of you know, taking a big block of aluminum and cutting it all out and then getting that and finding out it's a millimeter too, you know, short in this direction or long in that direction, you can literally print it overnight. So if you're doing it yourself or you're farming out the CNC, 3D printing your molds is a huge application for this stuff. Uh, here we've got a bracket replacement for a brake system on a, uh, on a bicycle that we had, a, had printed for a customer. Um, we got some different sort of geometries that you can you can just imagine what this is for. Okay, so if you look at some of these parts, you can really see the surface finish and quality is very, very high. If you've seen Mark Forge parts on set or online, this stuff is definitely comparable. You can get almost exactly the same results out of most of these nylons, and we have uh, several different types of nylon, more videos on that, obviously, on our site and on YouTube. So, uh, I mean, the beauty of these parts is amazing. And when you print at thick layer heights too, the carbon fiber actually hides the layer lines. So you can get like almost injection molded looking parts. It'll have a slight texture. It won't be perfectly smooth, uh, but you get really, really beautiful parts. Over here, I've got some vases. You can really see on a smooth surface. This was printed at 0.2 millimeter layer height with a point four nozzle and 0.6 millimeter extrusion width. So a little bit thicker for the vase, uh, but it definitely gives you some nice rigidity. So 
I'm gonna actually break some of these parts and burn some of these parts right here for you now so that you can see what happens when they're broken. Okay, so let's get out the equipment for this. When you're breaking stuff, sometimes it explodes. So I'm gonna put on the safety glasses, bring out the Babco vise, and get the fire ready. So first thing I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna take one of these sample bars here. Now, if you're curious and you wanna see how strong this stuff is, or you wanna use it in a specific application, but you need to test it in the acid bath first, we do have these samples available. Give us a call and we can send you a couple materials that might work for your application and you can test them all and compare and all that. We've got these available, very, very good stuff. So I'm just gonna put this in the vise here. And we're just gonna watch how it breaks. Not super scientific, but it'll give you an idea of just the way the material responds. So I'm going to take this part and I'm just going to pull back on it and we're going to watch if it explodes or if it bends or what happens. There we go. Woo! Okay, so it had a hard break, but it stayed together. So let's just loosen this up, take this out and look at how it broke. So, as you can see here, it did break across the layers there. So we might even print these a little bit hotter, but overall it wasn't along directly along the layer lines and it stayed together a little bit, which is a little bit of that nylon ductility. And um, yeah, it definitely was rigid. It was very, very stiff, uh, even compared to a lot of these other high temp materials without the carbon. This is 10 to 13% carbon, so we'll do other tests on other percentages of carbon coming out very soon. We've got as high as 25%. If you need something that's almost like aluminum, that's some crazy material. Check out our YouTube and our website for that stuff. Uh, but yeah, that broke, that broke pretty good. So my next test, I'm just gonna take this vase. And as beautiful as it is, I'm gonna shove my thumbs into it and see how it breaks. Is it gonna shatter? Is it gonna break down the layer lines, across the layers? How's that sort of gonna work? Is it just gonna fold in? Let's find out. First here at the top, we'll see if I squeeze it, it still has pretty good uh, malleability. You can still move it. And this has been printed for a few days, so it's absorbed a little bit of moisture and you get a little bit more flex and a little bit more impact strength when it has a little bit of moisture in it. Um, it's saturated, which is a very low percentage, but it's got moisture. So here we go. I'm just gonna go ahead and shove the thumbs in. Oh, wow. Oh, dude, it just deforms. Wow, look at that. Deforms, can I bring it back? Let's bring it back. Bring it back, oh yeah. This is crazy. Now if I put this in the dehydrator for a few hours and then brought it out, it would be much more stiff and rigid, but I'm just, I'm shoving my thumbs. Look at this, look at this. I can crush this whole vase and it's not even gonna break. Oh, this is so cool. Look at that, it just straight deforms. All right, yeah, let's really get this thing in. This is definitely tough stuff. Oh my gosh, look at that, <laughs> look at that. That is amazing. Even with the carbon fiber in there, it didn't break across the layer lines at all. Dude, I mean, that is cool. Let's see if I can tear it in half. Oh my, God. dude, I can't. oh yeah, there we go. Okay, that was the break I was looking for. <laughs> okay, as you can see, when I applied torsion, uh, when I twisted it and pulled it apart, it broke across, across the layer lines here. I can actually go in here and put some of this back out. Oh, this is just gonna be, I'm gonna put this on my desk. <laughs> oh my Lord, cool. Okay, so layers, Z-axis, definitely gonna be the weakest, uh, but as you can see, this stuff has great layer adhesion. Now, I'm gonna burn this for a minute just to see if it's self-extinguishing, how, how much it smokes, if it drips, it's nylon, so it's not gonna do the, you know, as good as our other high temp uh, performance plastics, but I'm gonna pull the bofa out for this one. This is a fume extractor that we do have available on the website. Uh, it's, it's like a, uh, seven, eight hundred dollars, something like that, but this is the Print Pro 2. We have fully enclosed systems, and then we've got this one, which has this nice little extendable arm, vacuum arm, and I'm just gonna turn it on, keep the fumes out of the studio while we burn this stuff. Great to have, you can use these things for soldering and other stuff like that as well. Uh, so, all right, I'm gonna burn this part first, and then I'll burn that sample part so we can see how it all reacts. All right, 10 seconds under flame, let's see what happens. Three, four. 
five, six, seven, eight, nine, ten. It's on fire. It's going to drip. This is not good. Okay. So it's definitely not flame retardant. It's going to keep going like this unless I do something real quick. So I'm just going to blow it out. Let those fumes get up into that fume extractor. And as you can see, the parts that burned are shiny. Now this is something cool. If you want a shiny surface, you can actually use a heat gun and go over the surface and make it shiny again. Um, pretty cool. You can also sand it and do other things. It is machinable. It is high enough temperature to be machinable at certain levels. Uh, but if you just want a nice surface finish, that is an option. You might be able to flash bake it too in super high temperatures and get something out of that. Now it's still soft here, 10 seconds, 15 seconds later, it's still really soft. I don't really want to touch it. Still malleable. As this cools down, it will go back to the stiff, rigid hardness it was before. Uh, but let's that, let that sit for a second. I'm just going to burn this sample part. So you get about, I don't know, about three millimeters thick. Let's see what happens. Let's see what happens to the text under direct flame. Five, six, seven, eight, nine, all right, just smoking. So the thicker the material, the faster, or the longer it takes to actually light on fire. Let's see if we can get this thing burning. And I believe we have ignition. Yes, we do. Okay, so it's burning. You can see it boiling there and bubbling. So this stuff will definitely burn. Not the best if you're putting it directly into flame as expected from a nylon. Now if I take this and I can sort of, I can still take this around and I can sculpt it like this. So if you're uh, really bored at home one day and you just want to melt it and play with it, I mean not recommended, but why not, right? Anyway, <laughs> anyway, very, very cool. Okay, so that's CF Nylon PA6 Carbon X. CF PA6 from 3D X Tech. Uh, I'm going to turn this both off here real quick. Um, once again, you can get this on our website, visionminer.com slash materials. If you liked this video, we've got a bunch more comparisons of all the different materials that we sell on visionminer.com. And we have a lot of the same parts printed in different ones. We've got full outlines of the carbon fiber nylons that we offer, carbon fiber and glass fiber, and even regular. So definitely go check those out and subscribe if you're not already to see when those do come out. Other than that, Thanks for watching, have a positive rest of your day, and we'll see you on the next video.